Hello and welcome again to Budget Buggies. Uh, this is going to be another tutorial episode. Um, and also, as you can see, this is going to be a Virtual Pro um, tutorial. I know a lot of you guys have been asking. Um, and again, when I say a lot of you guys, it means that one person on Reddit um, has been asking for a defending tutorial for uh, Virtual Pro. So I decided to put one together. Um, it took a little longer than I thought it would. Um, the footage was easy to get. Uh, just finding the time to edit it and you know make up all the post-processing effects just took uh, a really long time but hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys um, you know to see uh, the strategies that I kind of think of when I'm trying to defend um, and generally I play w the striker position in, in virtual pro but sometimes I like to become defense as well you know just for a change and um, you know just to help my team win You'll notice a lot of people don't know how to play defense on Virtual Pro, so you get a lot of goals as a result. Um, so in this in this video, um, the things I'm going to talk about are player attributes, uh, what to do when you don't have possession, have possession, uh, or when you want to win possession. You know all the trade-offs that you have to make. Um, and so the first thing we'll start talking about is actually setting up your character so you can be a much better defender. Um, I've noticed that uh, you want to be uh, a center stopper for the most uh, sliding and defensive stats. You can be a fullback or a sweeper, but that uh, changes your stats and not the best way for a full defensive player. Um, so I, I recommend you select the stopper. And then as far as height goes, um, it's important not to be a midget. Um, speed isn't important as much on defense. Defense is really all about positioning, but speed helps you get into the right position. Um, the height I've found that works best for me is 5'11", where you get a decent amount of acceleration, but you also are able to win headers. And also, you want the acrobatic clearance trait. So if you become 5'11 higher, you know, 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", you'll be able to do a good job of defending your box from dead ball situations like corners and uh, free kicks. So again, let's just talk about positioning. You'll see in a lot of these slides, I'll have a line there to, to indicate the offside. Uh, and the offside trap is really something that you should uh, exploit as much as possible. You want to keep people offside when they don't have the ball. But when they do have the ball, you want to be in enough position to be able to go in and cut off their position. So as you'll notice, at position one, I'm in line with him, and my goal is to get to position three. And shepherd him away from goal so the whole point here is to act as a barrier in between keep yourself in between the ball and the goal so you'll see that the offside trap is working for that other attacker but i also have to turn around and really kind of pressure the guy the the person with the ball into uh, a position that's going to be outside of the goal on the other side of Goal. You want him to not be able to get in the box unopposed. They have to pull a trick or some other risky move or pass to be able to get past you. So here, um, I am keeping the attacker on side. So if he made a pass diagonally, it would get past me and they would be through on goal. But if you hold your position more often than not online, people tend not to pass as much. Um, they they want to be you know the glory hunters. If you keep somebody in your sights and if you just jockey in front of them, uh, most likely they'll try and take a shot right through you and they'll get automatically tackled. Um, and that's the other thing uh, to talk about is uh, when you get into a jockeying position, you don't have to press the tackle key. In fact, I recommend you never press the tackle key, and you certainly never want to slide because you'll be out of position completely. In this case, you'll see the defender at one is already covering him. So you want to go from two to four so you can cover any balls into the box. Here again, you know, the, the cross is going to come in. It's pretty obvious at this point since the defender at one has shepherded him out towards the outskirts of the field. So there's only one person in the box, and all you have to do is just go there and cover that person in the box. These kinds of balls are quite deadly because if you miss the header, it's going to be a goal almost nine times out of ten. Um, luckily for me this time, I, I got the header away, and I tried to you know head it away to a free player because there wasn't anybody following up. If there was somebody following up, I'd try and you know head it um, into touch so that it goes for a corner instead. Here's another situation where you're in in front of the player, so you want to exploit the fact that you already have a step on the player. 
because uh, somebody else is already ruining the, uh, the offside trap. So generally, you want to keep about five yards distance. Uh, you want to have a five yard um, step on to your attacker so you can cover their position. You see that little um, trapezoid there that shows you know what you should be looking for and the arrow shows the direction it should be going. So you, you need to be jockeying back and forth and really putting yourself once again in between the goal and the attacker. And if you do that, you have a very good chance of intercepting long balls like this or through passes that go um, you know, the wrong way. So if, if you keep yourself in the right position, you really don't need to do any hard work in terms of you know, running down somebody. If, you, if you're in the right position, if you keep your defensive shape um, then you know your center backs and your full backs will be in the right positions to be able to cover you in case you know something were to go wrong. And as a result, as soon as you get the ball, if you don't have an outlet pass, just clear it. Um, don't try to be smart. Um, you're not Barcelona. Um, and here, again, this is where I talk about shape. Um, you're at position three. You really need to be going backwards, trying to make sure you cover those two attackers in front of you. But you know that the guy at number two is covered by the other defender, but there's a huge hole in the middle. Now, what happened in that play is your goal was to go and plug that hole in the middle, but the player at two made the smart run. He cut inside. Now, this forces you to go backwards without filling that gap. And also, now you have to take uh, on those three players who might be coming. So that was a great move by that attacker to allow his three um, teammates into the game, essentially. So now that you're at position one, your goal is to jockey sideways so that you push the person with the ball on the sidelines. You don't want him to come into the box. Unfortunately, he was smart. He passed. Now, this is a really good position for the attackers. There are four attackers and just three defenders. There's, there's a fourth defender keeping everybody on the side. For what reason, I don't know. You should really try and get people offside when there are this many attackers. It's, um... What you want to do is imagine that that little semicircle there is, as a force field. Um, in this kind of situation, when you have a large number of attackers, they're going to take a shot. So you want to make sure that you, as a center back, you're in the center area generally. You don't want to overcommit. You see, I'm not overcommitting. Just kind of jockey back and forth. Just imagine that that's like a force field, and you're just jockeying back and forth and trying to make sure they don't get an opening to curl one in on goal. So all you have to do is don't, don't dive in, don't slide tackle. If you slide tackle, you're out of position, they'll get a free shot at goal. Just just jockey back and forth. Eventually, they'll be able to get a shot, but you want that shot to be as terrible as possible. Um, this is going to be a shot that you know the keeper sees, the keeper anticipates, and it's not going to be an easy shot. So the, the chances are very likely the keeper is going to save. Um, if your keeper sucks, they will probably score but they'll probably score on a lot of things. So, I mean, as a defender, you want to make sure that the shots that you do let through, and you will let them through, because it's football, you're, you're not, you have to cover an area much larger than yourself, uh, that those shots are as terrible as possible and give your keeper the best chance of saving them. Now, as you can see, when the play started, um, I was at the halfway line, which is where offsides start. If you're on the other side of the halfway line, in the defensive half, it's not an offside. It doesn't matter where you get the ball. But after your attacking side halfway line, that's where the offside starts. So at this point, I have a good five yard, uh, 10 yard uh, lead on that player that's coming in behind me. I know the player at one is, has no other options. He, he's going down the line, he's gonna cross it in. He doesn't look like he's gonna cut in. So my job is to make sure that I watch that player to make sure he doesn't cut in. And if he does cut in, I wanna kind of pressure him. But if he doesn't, I want to make sure I stay with that player at two. Uh, so that way I can prevent any cross it, crossed headers from getting a free header for the attackers. So all I have to do is jockey forth. And now at this stage, since he's so uh, deep uh, in, in that position, his only option is really to cross at the far post or do a ground pass uh, diagonally. And that's what I'm preventing by being at two. That position is going to prevent... Uh, a ball from going uh, to uh, to you know the other attackers. So it's really all about position. Here you'll see this is the right place to catch somebody offside. The person at one, if he was passing the guy at two, it would be offside right away. 
So you want to do things like that where um, if they're going past you, then you need to let them go past you and catch them offside. Most people online have no idea uh, or are especially terrible with the offside rule. If you use the offsides to your advantage, you'll stop almost every attack. Uh, that's on Virtual Pro. Uh, once you make that choice, though, you have to be very, very careful. Here, again, um, I made the choice to tackle because I knew that players at 2 and 3 would be able to plug the gap in the middle. Uh, if I missed this tackle, they would have two attackers on goal almost. So it was a pretty risky move. It did pay off in the end because I got the tackle in. And the angle of the tackle was enough that it, it got it to a player, but that was that was quite a risky move. You should always think twice before you tackle. Here's another situation where, you know, you have to keep in mind that the player behind you might be running in, he might be ghosting in. So you have to respect that and you have to, you know, retreat essentially and make yourself available for an outlet pass. Here I've been dwelling a little bit too much on the ball. I should have cleared it. Um, and, you know, I have a few options. I don't want to turn into my attacker because I'll just give, a, give away the ball. So you want to use a safe pass option, especially as a defender. Uh, and if you're in doubt, just clear it. So here I just did a little bit, uh, an extra juke um, to get rid of the ball. Uh, so you can have time like that if you have the confidence. But generally, it's just easier to just clear the ball. Don't dwell on it. Um, here's another... Uh, a situation where you see an attacker at three and you want to go back while trying to see if you can get someone offside um, you can't because you see the the player at two at three so essentially what you do then is trying to mark your uh, the player that's next to you as much as possible so I'm trying to mark the guy at two and that that just works out you know I marked him properly now at this point I don't want to turn left because the player is coming in from my left, and more often than not, he's just going to tackle me, take the ball, and score. So in this situation, the best thing to do is just, just clear the ball. Uh, here, I took some more time, uh, and then what happened was after I did the outlet pass, one of the persons on my team just hit A. If you hit A, the AI will try and pass to you, no matter how much of a shitty position you're in. And really, this is the undoing of many defense. You'll see... Uh, the guy pressed A when he was being marked by two defenders, and so now the ball is back, and there's more problems for the defense. I got juked out there, uh, but luckily I had another defender, uh, the CPU defender, to help me out there. Uh, you want to use those guys as much as possible. If you're blocking a lane, you'll know that the CPU is trying to help you block the other lanes as well. CPU is pretty good at helping you do that. Again, same guy. Some people just don't learn not to press A at the wrong time. I mean, he's marked, and he just wants the ball. He presses A, loses the ball, and he probably costs his team uh, a scoring opportunity there. Again, if you find yourself out of position, keep the shape. Keep the defensive line. Don't just go run back into center back just because you are a center back. You want to make sure you cover those fullback positions as well. At this stage, that, that defender who plugged that gap, who became a center back, um, did a good job at two. And really, at one, you're just doing your job being a fullback and, and trying to cover and keep shape. So that's really uh, some of the things that you need to think about is, is positioning, keeping shape, and keeping people offside. That's really the main things about defending in uh, FIFA 12 is if, if you are uh, keeping your position in between the player and the goal, most likely you'll sh stop many, many shots. And I hope this helps you guys. Um, uh, if there was an error or something that I did wrong, if there's a better strategy, please let me know. I also want to be a, a better defender. But I hope this helps a, uh, you know, a lot of people become better defenders and have more enjoyable pro games. You know. And I hope you guys have good luck. Score lots of goals. Uh, let me know with a like uh, or a comment what you guys want to see if you want to see more tutorials. And uh, I'll see you guys later.